It was about a year ago that I mentioned that we're dealing with a pretty serious bike shortage. And while I will touch on this a little bit more in our 2023 prediction video, which is coming out soon, simply put, parts and bikes are now available. And while there are still delays and we're waiting on bikes that have been in development for years, it's still much better than it was. So here at bikepacking.com, we announced nearly 100 bikes and tested 20 in 2022. So in today's video, we're gonna talk through our top bikes of the year, the collective members' top choices, and a number of bikes that we have an eye on for 2023. Let's have some fun. All right, so to learn a little bit more about the bikes that I'm talking about today, there will be links in the description below for each bike, whether it's a review or a press release. And before I jump into the top six bikes we tested this year, I wanna mention that this video is supported in part by Surly Bikes. And Surly, they make serious steel bikes for people that don't take themselves too seriously. They make bikes that are versatile and durable, that can be dressed up or down for commuting, bike packing, ATBing, gravel grinding, or really whatever you call fun on two wheels. With 15 original dirt-friendly platforms, they offer something that fits just about anyone for any style of riding. So for more on Surly, make sure to hit this card right here, or I also have a link in the description below. When one of the editors here at bikepacking.com likes a bike so much that they buy it, eh, that's when you know it's worth talking about. That's exactly what Logan did after his review of the Kodak Solaris Max. Logan mentions that the Solaris Max comes with perfectly engineered tube set and geometry that blends suppleness and compliance with a punchy and responsive ride, making for an incredibly stable and confident trail bike that climbs well, descends like a beast, and pedals well on long backcountry trips. One of the more fun bikes I've pedaled in a while, the Grappler is Surly's take on the drop bar mountain bike, and it is different, which is Pretty awesome. Built around 27.5 by 2.6 inch wheels and a rather modern day mountain bike geometry, the Grappler provides an inspiring ride on single track, but also can handle two tracks, unpaved and paved roads. And it happens to be a great commuter, especially with the Burley in tow. The Grappler is the first 27.5 bike that I've enjoyed in a while, and it's made me contemplate my take on 27.5, and also makes me wonder why the hell we haven't seen more 27.5 drop bar specific bikes out there. Well done, Surly. All right, so Cass, uh, Cass Gilbert, he writes for bikepacking.com. He lives in Oaxaca. He's got a cute little dog, and he's been riding Jones bikes for the past six years. And this year, Cass was able to test the new Space Frame tie, which is a bike that represents the culmination of Jeff Jones's vision for the ultimate mountain bike. Thanks to its considered interplay between frame geometry and design, fork offset, rim width, and tire size. Cass mentions that the Space Frame's curvy tubes have more opportunity to flex vertically than the inherently rigid structure of a diamond frame, which helps contribute to the bike's magic carpet ride. The test bike I spent probably the most hours on this year was the Pipe Dream Alice, or A-L-I-C-E, and it was a true joy to pedal. The original Alice was one of the first big volume drop bar bikes to the market, and in its third iteration, they really hit a sweet spot, at least for me. I'm a climber at heart, and it can handle that with some solid speed, but I'll take any advantage when it comes to descending. And with its super high trail, it's very inspiring. Plus, paired with their adjustable and split dropouts, it allows for single speed and belt drives, and it gives you the ability for a shorter or longer chainstay. It accompanied me on many long rides and bikepacking trips, and it was just a blast to ride. So Miles had the pleasure of testing one of the latest drop bar mountain bikes, the Chemba Yopan. The Yopan stood out this year amid a growing variety of omni-terrain bikes with its clearance of 29 by 2.6 inch tires, 120 millimeter suspension fork, dropper post routing, sliding dropouts, and slightly more versatile trail ready geometry relative at least to many of the drop bar mountain bikes on the market. Oh, and it's made by the fine folks over at Austin, Texas. Miles really enjoyed this ride. All right, so since starting this YouTube channel, I've slowly gotten out of my comfort zone, which means I'm riding bikes and testing products that I normally 
wouldn't test in the past. And this has really been an eye-opening experience for me. And that's why I decided to give the Bike Friday Alpaca a try this year. While I've only been on it once so far, I get the idea and it's actually not as weird of a ride as I anticipated. These types of bikes are great for taking advantage of multimodal transportation. So say like go ride and then get on a bus and then maybe go ride again and get on a train. It's really kind of convenient. Not to mention it stores really well in cramped spaces. And the Alpaca comes with a variety of bike packing centric features, including newly developed alt bars, loads of mounts, and plenty of space for bike packing bags. All right, so again this year, we asked our bike packing collective members what they thought about the 2022 crop of bikes that we reviewed. We sent our members a list of all of the bikes we reviewed this year and received over 500 votes. And you too can vote on these bikes next year if you sign up for the Bike Packing Collective, which not only includes you in collective awards, but also has many other benefits, including the Bike Packing Journal, which is our very own print publication. So here are the top three results of the Bike Packing Collective member vote. So while the Kodak beat the Grappler in our internal voting panel of seven individuals by a very narrow margin of one vote, it took the top spot in our collective award vote with 32% of the total total ballots. Last year, the Stargazer Steel took top honors, so instead of voting on the titanium version this year, we decided to give it top marks in best upgrade category. But our collective members continue to love the Stargazer and voted the tie version in second with 26 percent of the vote. After the Baxter was replaced by the Moots Route ESC this year, I was super excited to throw a leg over this bike. But the Route ESC is not really like the Baxter. It's more in line with the Route family, but with pretty massive tire clearance. And members really enjoyed this bike as well, giving it 13% of the vote, putting it in third. So like I mentioned, we announced 100 new bikes in 2023. And while we can't test all of them, we try to get our hands on as many as reasonably possible for review. Of the many bikes that will be on the market in 2023, here are five bikes that have piqued our interest for one way or another. Unveiled at Eurobike this year, the Pelago Thorsmork is an adventure-ready, rigid mountain bike that marks an unexpected step for the Helsinki Finland base brand. The Thorsmork is designed around 29 by 2.6 inch tires with loads of mounting options and it looks like an excellent option for a variety of bikepacking trips. Logan is currently testing the Pipe Dream Cirrus S5 and so far he is really enjoying it. But Pipe Dream recently kind of teased the S6, a titanium version of the S5 that has a few extra mounts. Overall, we are really excited to throw a leg over the S6. It looks beautiful and I'm sure it rides just as well. Many of you all know my love for full suspension bikes, especially full suspension bikes with ample frame space. And when the Allied BC40 was launched this year, I was really anxious to test it out. I put a bug in Allied's ear a few months ago, so hopefully we can make a review happen for you all in 2023. Another interesting bike that is also in for a review currently is the Kodak Cascade. The Cascade is a steel drop bar mountain bike that is built around 29 by 2.6 inch wheels, boost spacing, and comes with a variety of mounting points. And finally, Omnium, which is best known for their line of utilitarian cargo bicycles, recently stepped into the world of mountain bikes. The Big Bad Jumbo was concocted by Omnium's founder, Jimmy, and this long and relatively progressive hardtail has some pretty nice lines and a lot of mounts, so it's definitely high up on our list for next year. All right, so that is about it. What do you all think about the 2022 crop of bikes? And if there's a specific bike out there that we didn't mention or that you want us to review, let us know in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.